the biggest waste of time for you as an artist is making the art itself. And the only reason that is the case is because making the art is an expression of your ego. The moment you get rid of that ego, the moment you exclude that ego from the creative process, that is the moment you achieve that art career of your dreams. Well, let me explain what I mean with that. Well, when I first started to draw in art school, I never picked up a pencil before and I started drawing. And lo and behold, a year later, I became very good at it. To that extent that the teacher decided to take my drawings and hang them on the walls next to the best students of the school. And what happened was, I looked at those best students and I started to feel insecure. Hey, wait a minute, I'm only able to draw. And these students are able to paint with watercolor, paint with oil paintings, paint with all sorts of mediums. And so this insecurity drove me to become better. I decided to also go into those mediums and paint with watercolor, and do poetry, and do all sorts of stuff. And lo and behold, a year later, two years later, I started winning awards outside of the school. And these were not just any awards, these were cash awards. For me at that time, I felt like a god. Making money from your truest self-expression felt amazing. But several days after those awards, you know what happened? I started to feel insecure again, because guess what? There were artists who were drawing way more realistic than me, who were painting way more realistic than me. And so what did I do? I practiced reels. And then after a while, I started to feel insecure about that as well. And so what did I do? Well, I invented my own painting medium, painting with lightning from the sky. 30,000 volts of static electricity, amazing, gorgeous pieces of art. And on top of that... I couldn't be the worst anymore because I was the only one painting with this. And so by definition, I was the best. But lo and behold, it didn't took long before I felt insecure again. What if people figure out that this painting medium is actually super easy to paint with and not something that is admirable? What if people figure out that it's actually not that hard to develop the painting medium in the first place? And so this vicious cycle of me chasing higher selves what is that it's an expression of ego i didn't want to paint realistically i didn't want to learn realism the only reason i learned that was because i was insecure i felt like if i couldn't draw realistically people wouldn't take me seriously anymore and so it was an expression of ego. Me practicing was an expression of my insecurity. It had nothing to do with art. I wasn't actually expressing myself, my truest self. The only thing I was doing was trapping myself inside of the opinions of other artists, other people, people that I didn't even care about, people that I didn't even like. This is the infamous ego treadmill of artists. I would go to an exhibition learn and be inspired by some photography artist that makes these amazing artistic photographs and then several hours later i would be practicing photography i would be learning about all sorts of stuff i wasn't even a photograph guy i didn't even like photographs all of it came from insecurities all of it wasn't a expression of creativity at all it was anxiety dressed up in creativity dressed up in making art according to my polls the far majority 70 plus percent of people 80 plus percent of people of artists who have been practicing art some of them for 10 years 15 years 20 years have not put their art up for sale yet online why because of ego ego is the mind killer ego is the difference between having a full-time art career and slaving away in your studio complaining that nobody wants to buy your art everything is ego and everything is solved the moment you solve this ego dilemma let's take a look at the best artists in the world what do these best artists have in common let's take a look at the drawings of tracy evans Tracy M's drawings, rudimentary, beginner level drawings. These are not, this is not drawing skill. This person cannot actually draw anything. That's the reality. Now, does she care about that? No, she does not. Does she care about people's opinions or the fact that she cannot draw realistically? Here's the thing, her drawings are the equivalent of children-like drawings. After a couple of weeks of drawing, I was able to achieve this level of drawing. Anyone in the world can achieve this level of drawing. There's nothing special about this level of drawing. Yet she is selling her drawings at hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so why is it? Why does she have the confidence to do so? Why is she not ashamed 
of selling these drugs? Why are you, after five years of drug, five years of making art, 10 years of making art, 15 years of making art, ashamed? Why are you not selling your art? Why are you not even trying to sell your art? Well, please wait. I, I'm, I'm first going to practice a little bit more so that I, I can do this and this. Who cares? Who the f*** really cares? Tracy Emin more certainly doesn't care. Imagine Tracy Emin having an art career with a lot of anxiety and a lot of ego, wouldn't have happened. <laughs> it's literally unthinkable. You cannot sell what she is selling if your ego is involved. And so what do these top level artists actually have? What makes them different from you is they have figured out how to deal with their ego, how to exclude their ego, how to push their ego away. Now to make the point a little bit more clear, I will put a couple of children-like drawings on the left side and then a couple of top-level artists that make the most crazy paintings sold for millions of dollars on the right side so that we can compare. And that we can see that these skill levels of these artists are nothing important. They're not amazing. I mean, Basquiat is amazing. I love his art, but it's also something that any child would be able to make. Whether you like it or not. The last time I said this in a video, somebody started freaking out in the comment section. Like, well, how dare you say that? It's such a societal element in his art. He's, he's critiqued towards this and this. Like, who the f*** cares? It looks like it's made by a child because... It basically almost is made by a child. And so what do all of these artists have in common? What do, what do the best artists in the world have in common? They don't care. They don't care about what other people think of them. They don't have that ego element. Somehow they figured out how to get rid of that ego and create anyway. Any style, any skill level, any any type of expression that comes to them. They just simply create without judgment on their own drawings and so then the question becomes well how can we get rid of that inner voice telling us that we are not good enough how can we get rid of that ego how can we get rid of judging ourselves every single second every single turn of the way how can we express ourselves freely as artists well before i give you the solution to this ego problem i want to point out that i would never shamelessly plug my own products inside of my video i find that to be disgusting and absolute sellout arts behavior that i do not participate in but if i would do that i would obviously say that the solution to this ego problem is to buy my artist residency where you will learn how to tackle that ego where you will learn how to sell art at any skill level at any age for anyone and so after you've bought this arts residency you will be inspired by other artists who stopped caring about what other people thought of them and simply started posting simply start selling that is all possible if you're interested the link is obviously in the description that said let's get back to the lesser solution to this whole ego so what could you possibly do that solves the ego problem the anxiety the doubts instantly right now on this spot Let's say that you're pretty terrible at art. Let's say you haven't posted your art before. Let's say you are ashamed of that element and you just, you, you feel that fear. You're in that, in that situation. What could you possibly do? Well, oftentimes the best thing that can happen to us is that our worst fear becomes a reality. Because when that happens, we suddenly realize there was nothing to be afraid of in the first place. So here's what I would recommend. Take your phone, put a time limit on of let's say five minutes, 10 minutes. Take a pencil, make whatever comes to mind. Make whatever comes to mind. Just make anything. It doesn't really matter. As a matter of fact, don't even try to make something good. Try to make the worst thing you've ever made in your entire life. And then after the five minutes is over, take that piece of paper. You take your cell phone. You turn your cell phone around. You start the record button and you hold it in your hand and you just talk about what you make. And then the most important part of it all, Stop recording and publish it online. And here's what will happen. Nothing. Nobody will give a damn. Nobody will comment. Nobody will care. And the moment you realize that you at your worst, when you're trying to make the worst piece of art ever, that nobody cares, that's the moment you will be free. For how long? I don't know. I don't think that this type of freedom will last months, years, or your entire life. But at least you will be free for a couple of days. You will taste what it feels like to not give a f about other people's opinions. You will taste what it feels like to get rid of your ego. And the moment you taste it once, 
you will taste it again. That said, get the hell out of here.